Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be an overview of my OB-GYN rotation. I finished my OBGYN rotation about a couple of days ago and I've had a little bit of time to process everything. I've got my handy dandy iPad here, which I wrote down all my notes on. For the week setups, each week we were assigned to a different kind of specialty. So my first week, I believe I started in LND days, which was like a seven to six kind of hours. Like those are my hours. So I was there for 11 hours a day, five days a week. And then my second week, I was on LND nights, which was a 12 hour shift from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Following week, I was in gyne surgery. So that was 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. again. And then after gyne surgery was clinic, which was nine to four. And then after clinic week, it was back to LND days. And then my last week there, I was on LND nights again. So those were my six weeks and basically um, we would rotate with the same students that we were assigned with our first week. I had a really solid group of people that I was with because we helped each other. We would be courteous in terms of allowing each other to see things that we haven't seen before. And I think that that really helped attribute to how much I enjoyed this rotation because I've heard horror stories from some of my classmates about having to fight to scrub into a c-section or to scrub into like any surgery or see any procedures they would have to fight um, other students and you know you're paying for this experience and I understand that it's it's like on a first come first basis like whoever sees this patient you know they're going to have dibs almost on scrubbing into their surgery or d helping the doctor with the procedure that they're planned for. But what the students that I worked with and I would do is if it was something that we hadn't seen before, we would ask like, is it okay if I go instead of you? Or um, if they didn't want to go see it, I would just say like, I'll go, you know, like I haven't seen that the more exposure I get, the better. So that's that's how we would play by things. And it's I think it's a good mentality to kind of practice because you don't know like where these people are going to be in the future. They could be your colleagues. And I think if you try to keep your relationships as good as possible and not step on each other's toes, I think that's a good thing to do because like I said, they could be your colleagues, but they could also be your boss in the future. And you never know like where they're gonna end up, where you're gonna end up. After my six weeks, I think I know that I'm more interested in L&D versus Gyne. And I think it's because of the surgical aspect of Gyne. I didn't really enjoy standing for such an extensive period of time, even though these surgeries were two to four hours, which is not that long, but I just did not enjoy being in that surgical atmosphere. It was very intimidating, but this could also just be because it's like the first time I've been in a actual OR. In particular, I just didn't like gyne surgery because of the long hours, but also things just got very repetitive and i feel like i'm the type of person who needs to see something different every day or else i get bored very easily l and d i really enjoyed because i know i've always been interested in this field especially taking care of pregnant females and like making sure that they are up to date with everything that they need to be to have a healthy newborn so the hospital that I was placed into was a community hospital so it's open to the public like a lot of the patients that we take don't have private insurance so obviously things are harder because i would have to help them figure out what to do if there was a medication that their pharmacy didn't cover and things like that and i think that for like someone who is new to this field like it's very eye-opening especially since the place that i was at last was a private hospital a lot of the people that were coming in were wealthy and i like i specifically think that because for ob i was placed in a hospital in a area that was not 
well off the patients that were coming in had more complications than the normal average person and that allowed me to see a lot and i think that education wise it really like honed in that i had an interest for this field in each section so for l d we would be able to do blood draws um start ivs we would help put them on the toco dynamometer i think that's what you call it so we would put them on the toco and then also the fetal heart rate monitor um, and those two are super important for anyone in LND because number one, that's how you measure your contractions, but also that's how you measure the fetal heart rate, which you want to keep between 110 to 160. This is especially important because for ob this is essentially your EKG. You have to know how to read the fetal heart tracings to know when there is fetal demise, if there's A cells, D cells, whether they're late, early, or variable. Like these are important things that you need to know um, so that if you need to go into an emergency section or emergent delivery, you know why. And then also we would help move the patients to the OR. If they had a C-section, we would bring them back. Sometimes you'd be able to scrub into the C-section, which I was able to once. They had me like hold retractors, help with suction. And basically sometimes if you're not doing that, you're not scrubbed in and you basically help run the ABG blood, uh, the cord gases down to the lab because those need to be analyzed um, in a fairly quick fashion. So we would have that. Um, sometimes you would be helping like the nurse, the surgical tech who's running around the room trying to figure things out. And then gyne, like I said, it was all surgeries. Some of the things that I saw was a dermoid cyst removal, which I got to scrub in. And, and then there was a hysterectomy, also a hysteroscopy. Like there's just a whole bunch of different surgeries and bilateral tubal ligations, things like that with, um, where they like burned the fallopian tubes with the ligature clinic this is where you basically see patients that are coming in for their fetal checkups they're getting their ultrasounds done their fetal doppler fundal height measured and then also if they need vaccinations i did a ton of hpv vaccinations here because i just went up to the nurse and i heard that this patient needed a vaccination i went up to her and i said hey like would you be able to teach me how to do it? And she was like, yeah, sure. So um, she taught me, I did one. And then later on, another patient came in needing an HPV vaccination and I did another one. And then that's just like the whole routine. Um, and I just helped to do these vaccinations. It's actually really fun for me. I enjoy giving vaccinations, which is really weird, but it was just something that I really liked to do. It was exciting for me to be able to do something hands-on. And then we also had Copal Clinic, which stands for colposcopy. So anyone who's coming with abnormal pap or HPVs, we would have to do a colposcopy so this is where like you have the microscope and you're looking at the cervix tissue to see if there's any um, changes and if there are you could biopsy if not then they're good to go my most used resource i would say for this rotation i know that there's an app that you can use to figure out the pap smear um like algorithm whether they need to come back in a year whether they need to go for a colposcopy okay it's called the ASCCP app um, in the app you basically put in like all their risk factors how old they are um, what their last pap was and if it was normal or not and then like what you should do based on those things and as a student I know like you're supposed to remember but sometimes it's hard to and um, I would see a lot of the residents use this. They would tell me like, if you're unsure, just use this app, put in all the information. And it'll tell you based on the guidelines if they would recommend you to have them repeat a PAP in a year, repeat a co-test or do a, um, a colposcopy. So this app was really helpful in terms of clinic use. I think it was just like nice to have that on hand. Another one that you, sh you could have is the up-to-date app there's like this page especially for i think it's called the nagel's rule nagel's rule something like that where you're determining the estimated delivery date based on the patient's lmp 
and as a student you're supposed to know what it is which like you know but sometimes in the gist of the moment they're just like talking to you so much and you just can't figure things out i believe it's like minus three months plus seven days and then plus a year all right so now i'm going to talk about some of the coolest things i've seen on this rotation so like i said i was able to scrub into a dermoid cyst removal which was super cool if you guys don't know what that is it's another term for a teratoma and these cysts can have teeth and hair in them this particular patient she had this cyst and it was huge let me just like it was literally like this size we did it laparoscopically which i think was insane because i've never seen a laparoscopic seizure like up close before i've always seen it from a distance where they did the hysterectomy and stuff like that but for this specific dermoid removal they had to like scrape the cyst off the adhesions that it was attached to and then at that point like they had to be super careful because you don't want to rupture the cyst it's full with like this fluid that it's not great if it gets into the peritoneum so they had to be careful about that and then once they got the cyst like off the adhesions they had to um, put this bag through the laparoscopic tube like i don't know what it's called um but then they put the bag in and then they have to kind of envelop the cyst in it so that they could pull it out but the cyst was too big to be pulled out so they had to cut it in the bag and then once they pulled it out we got to see the teeth and stuff and it was just it was just like nothing i've ever seen before and also we hear about these things in school like we hear like there's a cyst out there that's possible to have teeth and hair and for this particular one there was there were incisors in this cyst which was insane to see in the flesh but it's just it was just cool for me because i've heard about it in school but i've never thought that i would ever see it in person when i was in l and d we did a c-section on a patient that had polyhydraminos and i'm not even kidding when i tell you the amount of fluid like the amount of amniotic fluid that came out was just insane it was the entire or became a niagara falls it was like nothing i've ever seen before which is why i say it's cool but like obviously polyhydraminose is not a condition you want to like laugh about and then also i think this was my first week there but i triaged a patient from beginning to end and like saw her come in for an induction of labor and then while she was laboring and i think me being there from the beginning and getting her full history and stuff like that really helped build a relationship with me and her because even in the room when she was giving birth like she knew i was there and i was helping like push her feet back and stuff like that so that she would be in mcrobert's position and then afterwards she was just thanking me so much and i was like i did literally nothing like i'm just a student i didn't deliver your child i didn't suture your tears like anything like that but she was just so grateful that i was there and i think i provided her a little bit of comfort because i was that provider for her that saw her in the beginning stayed in the room while she was giving birth and continually checked in on her through her process of laboring that she just felt the need to say thank you and it was just like for me as a student it was so heartwarming and even when her baby came out i started tearing up and i really really wanted to say congratulations but i just couldn't because i knew if i did i would start like literally bawling so i had to hold myself back but once i got myself together i said congratulations and then this is crazy but on my last day in this rotation um this patient came in to triage um, and she was literally fully dilated. We had to rush her into the labor and delivery room. And then she was literally pushing within five minutes of getting onto that bed, which I think is so insane. And it reminds me just how amazing the female body is and the changes that it goes through to bring a new human into the world. It's the next couple things I want to talk about are things that I wish I had brushed up on before I started the rotation or just in general, you know, like in the future, if I was trying to give advice to someone, I would definitely say like brush up on these things before you head in. So the first thing I would tell you to do is brush up on your scrub class. I know like everyone has one of these. So just 
go through the steps of how to scrub improperly, how to not break sterile field, because that's a very big thing. And if you do break sterile field, like one of the attendings or the residents will get extremely mad at you. Next, I would say definitely remember what types of testings are done within each trimester. So you have like the nuchal translucency testing in the first trimester. You could also do the amniocentesis. And then in the second trimester, I believe there's the triple screening and the quadruple screening that you could use for like trisomy 21 and things like that. So definitely know and categorize into each trimester what things should be done. And then also you want to know like what emergent symptoms to look out for if someone's coming into triage, especially for LND. Um, the four biggest questions you always want to ask are one, have you had any vaginal bleeding? Two, any leakage of fluids? Three, are you feeling the baby move okay? And four, are you having any contractions? And I think as long as you hit those four questions, you'll definitely be able to figure out like why they're coming in, if they're an emergent case or not. And some of the emergent symptoms you want to look out for, especially for preeclampsia and eclampsia, um, are like right upper quadrant pain, um, proteinuria, like swelling of the feet. You also want to look for headaches, like flashing lights, um, anything that can steer you towards those like differentials that are very important that you need to treat, um, definitely like look into what are those and how you can like categorize them into what's important and what's not. My rating for this particular rotation, I, like I said, I really enjoyed um, L&D and I could see myself being an L&D PA in the future. Like if that was an opportunity, I would definitely take it up because it's something that I'm super interested in. I really like the field and I think the patient population I work well with. I'm going to give the rotation a four out of a five because I was not able to do as much as I wanted. A lot of my friends who are also in ob -GYN right now, she told me that she was able to deliver a baby on her own with the PA behind her. And especially at the hospital that I was at, they are trying to teach their own interns and residents and stuff like that, which I totally understand. But as a student, I feel like they did not use us to the most that they could have. You know, I got to see a lot on this rotation and then I didn't get to do as much as I hoped to, but I don't regret like going to this hospital because of the patient population that I saw and also being able to see like all these different patients and the environment it's like it's very different when you go from a private hospital to a public hospital and I got to see that kind of exposure so now I know like in the future if I'm planning to apply for a job um, I'll take these things into consideration so although I was not able to do a lot of hands-on stuff in this rotation I did get to see a lot and I did get to learn and just like absorb a lot from the environment that I was in. All right, so that is the end of this rotational review. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't really know what else to talk about. Um, and I feel like this video is pretty long as is already. So I'm gonna go now, but if you guys have any questions about this rotation in general, definitely leave them down below. I'm open to answering them and I will see you in the next video. Bye.